Hi everyone, Dr. Matter here. Let's look at this problem from complete, complete problems one from our diagonal forces unit. A 60 kilogram acrobat is hanging at rest from two ropes as shown. So this tells us two important things. Our mass is, is oh, sorry, one second. Our mass is 60 kilograms and we're hanging at rest. When it says hanging at rest, that means our acceleration is equal to zero because there's no movement. Well, that, uh, that tells us F net, which is equal to mass times acceleration, is also equal to zero, since acceleration is equal to zero. That tells us that all of our forces that are going up must equal all of the forces going down or else there would be an acceleration one way or the other in the vertical plane. It also tells us that all of our forces toward the right are equal to all of the forces added toward the left, or else there would be some horizontal acceleration to the right or left. This is saying they're exactly equal and they oppose each other and therefore there is no movement of the system. The system is at rest and the forces are balanced. How many forces are acting on the acrobat? Well, we all would always have our force of weight, right? Pulling it toward the earth, force mg, which we can calculate from our 60 kilograms that it gave us earlier. So it's 60 kilograms times gravity, which is 600 newtons. And then we all, that's pulling it down toward earth, but we have these two ropes with tension forces that are pulling it up away from earth. So we have one, two, three forces acting on our acrobat. Are the forces on the acrobat balanced? Well, we've already talked about this. Yes, they are. All the forces up have to equal the forces down. All of them right have to equal all of them left because there's no movement of the system. The system is at rest. So yes, what is the magnitude of the net force on the acrobat? Once again, we've already calculated, it must be zero newtons because uh, there is no acceleration of the system. So now, what is the tension in rope one? Well, we have to go a little bit deeper into what exactly is going on in the system. So if we, let's simplify things and let's look at this as a square. The acrobat is a square. It has its weight, fmg, which we know is 600 newtons. It's being held by a line, FT1, with a tension of FT1, and another line with a tension of FT2. Okay. And these tensions uh, is what we're trying to calculate. The tension of this, the magnitude of this, of this tension of this rope is what we're trying to calculate. And to do that, we must break down the tension line into its vertical component, which would be FT1 vertical, and uh, right here, and then, oop, that is not a straight line, but you know what I mean, and this is FT2 vertical. So that's its tension in the vertical plane, and then into the horizontal, FT1 uh, horizontal, and FT2 horizontal. And if we look, we can see that the FT1 horizontal and FT2 horizontal are exactly canceling each other out. And when we look at the vertical, we can see that what's opposing the vertical tension is the weight. Okay, so that's what we're interested in here is getting at what the vertical tension is and therefore we can start to get at what the overall tension of the line is. It's also given us that our angle of the lines is equal, 61 degrees. Because they're equal, the angles are equal, that means the weight of this acrobat is evenly distributed between the two ropes. So that means that our F of tension for one is equal to our F of tension for two. And that also tells us that our F of tension in the vertical is equal to the F of F of tension for two in the vertical and also for the horizontal also, but that's not, that's not as much our focus right now. So we can say we know that everything up 
is equal to everything down. So we know that FMG is pulling down and that's equal to everything that's pulling up exactly in the vertical plane. So that's equal to F of T one in the vertical plus F of T two in the vertical. We know that F of T one is equal to F of T two. So I'm just gonna call it F of T as a general term. So we can say that FMG is equal to two times our F T, our general, sorry, F of T in the vertical general term. So now we can say 600 newtons is equal to two times F of T in the vertical. So 300 newtons is equal to F of T in the vertical. Okay, so this is important, but it's not the tension. It's not the overall magnitude of that line, of the tension of that line. This is the vertical component of that. So therefore, to find the overall tension of that line, we can say, okay, well, we know the vertical force, we know the force in the vertical plane is 300 newtons. Okay, and so that is the F of T in the vertical, and that's equal to the force of tension of the line times the sine of theta. So this is equal to the F of tension, the overall tension of the line, we're just using it general because we know they're equal to each other, times the sine, oh, uh, let me erase that, of 61. Okay, well, let's keep it in there. Sine of 61. So then we end up with a force of tension equal to 300 divided by the sine of 61, which should be 343 newtons. This is our force of tension of the line, and that is equal to the force of tension 1, which is equal to the force of tension 2. So this is 343 newtons, and this is 343 newtons. Okay. Hope this helps. Let me know if you have questions. Talk to you soon. Bye.